Cologne Bonn Airport, the leading political representatives of the Federal Republic of Germany, headed by President Heinrich Lipke and Chancellor Ludwig Erhardt, await the arrival of a prominent visitor from Africa. His Excellency Arden Abdulli Osman, President of the Somali Republic, pays a state visit to the free part of Germany in order to hold personal talks designed to strengthen the fruitful political, economic and cultural relations between the two countries. After a cordial welcome, at which members of the Somali Embassy are also present, the national anthems of these two friendly powers are played. Together, the two heads of state inspect the guard of honor drawn up by the Bundeswehr, the first steps on the soil of a country which during the next 10 days, Arden Abdulli Osman will come to know more closely. Attentively followed by eager reporters and journalists representing the international press. On the day of his arrival, the illustrious visitor, escorted by a police motorcycle unit, calls at the Palais Schomburg in Bonn the official residence of the Federal Chancellor. At this meeting, which is also attended by the General of the Somali Police Force, the principal subjects of discussion are the technical and economic problems facing this rising young country, which has only been independent for five years, and which is now able to bear the sole responsibility for its future. Chancellor Erhardt and President Osman, as well as ministers of the two governments, confirm their mutual interest in further intensifying the present good cooperation. The visit of the African head of state to the German federal president and Frau Wilhelmina Lübcke is marked by a spirit of mutual esteem. In the presence of his ministers who accompany him on his tour of the Federal Republic, President Osman is decorated with the Grand Cross of the Order of Merit of the Federal Republic of Germany by President Heinrich Lübcke. The German president is honored by the award of the Order of the Somali Star, presented to him by his African guests. The history of German engineering and technology is closely linked with the name of Nikolaus August Otto. On the second day of his visit, the Somali president is shown round the Klöckner Humboldt Deutz works in Cologne, where a hundred years ago the revolutionary development of the combustion engine first started. Here the latest technical progress in the field of mechanical engineering is clearly visible, and its details are explained by the company's director general, Dr. Jakob. President Osman displays keen interest, especially in those heavy vehicles that could help to accelerate the building of roads and industries in his country, which is twice the size of the Federal Republic, and which could be used to great advantage in the extensive agricultural areas of Somalia. At the sight of a great new bridge being built across Germany's largest river by leading Cologne industrial enterprises, the African visitors are able to study the plans as well as the rational road building methods employed here. These are of vital importance in order to keep the ever increasing traffic in the Federal Republic on the move. Leading building experts of the Strabag Company explain the details of the new bridge across the Rhine in Cologne. The German workers have their own way of thanking the African Chief of State for his visit. The next day, 
The destination of the special train placed at the disposal of the African visitors by the Federal Railways is Wolfsburg, a town that has become the symbol of the Federal Republic as the world's second largest producer of motor vehicles. The Volkswagen factory, with its 48,000 employees, awaits President Osman. Every day, 5,600 vehicles come off the final assembly lines, ready for shipment to all the countries of the world. Their route to the principal German seaports is followed by the representatives of the Somali Republic to the ancient Hansa town of Bremen. With an expert and critical eye, President Osman and his delegation study this full-scale model of the Bremen docks and are thus able to compare their organization and installations with those in Mogadishu, the capital of their country on the Indian Ocean. Bremen also becomes the scene of a cordial meeting with fellow countrymen from distant Africa. At the air training school of the German Lufthansa, the president is informed of the progress made in the training of future pilots from his country. Roger, V line one four two is clear. Time now four five. Over. Intensive study was required before the trainees became familiar with the laws of aerodynamics and navigation, and before they were able to complete without fault the severe exercises in the link training plane. Then, with their German trainers at their side, they were able to demonstrate to the eminent African visitors takeoff and perfect low flying exercises. At Bremen Airport, these future pilots of Somalia bid farewell to their president, happy in the knowledge that they have passed their test. Then the head of state of the Somali Republic boards a special plane for the flight to Berlin, the old capital of Germany where he will be confronted with the political reality of divided Germany. This is a map of Germany. The communists have divided this country into two parts by a strongly fortified frontier which is 865 miles long. The Iron Curtain is designed to seal off the entire communist bloc in East Europe from the free world. Berlin, the capital of Germany, is divided into two parts by the wall built by the communist rulers in East Berlin. This wall of shame separates parents from children, brothers from sisters. After flying through the air corridor over Soviet-occupied territory, President Osman receives a warm welcome at Tempelhof Airport by the Deputy Mayor of Berlin, Herr Alberts, and by members of the Berlin Senate. West Berlin receives the visitor from Africa with optimism and animation, with the pulsating traffic of a newly risen metropolis. Along Kurfürstendamm, the city's most famous street, past Charlottenburg Castle, across Ernst Reuter Platz, and through the Hansa district, designed by architects from all over the world, the African visitors drive to the Brandenburg Gate. This symbol of national consciousness today signifies the unnatural division of Germany. Here at the wall erected by the communist rulers in East Berlin, Freedom and the right of self-determination for 17 million Germans beyond the Iron Curtain come to an end. Here at this wall, which cuts the city in two, Germans are killed by the bullets of communist frontier guards, people who tried to escape from the tyranny of the Soviet-occupied zone of Germany to the freedom of West Berlin.
In the variety of meetings and impressions, the visit to Garmisch Partenkirchen will doubtless remain as a treasured memory, recalling the peaceful atmosphere of a small South German town, which is also a center of international tourism. It's situated in Bavaria, on the northern edge of the Alps, and nearly 600 miles from Berlin. The gondola of a cable railway carries the guests from equatorial Africa to the top of the Zugspitze, 9,700 feet above sea level, and Germany's highest mountain. On this particular day, visibility is not very good, just enough for a few snapshots by the reporters and the newsreel cameramen. The view across the vast panorama of the Alps is hindered by heavy snow, fog, and low clouds. Munich, the capital of Bavaria, makes up for it, however, and presents itself to President Osman and his delegation with all the signs of the commencement of spring. Past some fine examples of Baroque and classical architecture, through the busy streets of a city which has become the home of outstanding scientists and artists, and which at the start of the university semester attracts 23,000 students, and on to group to the Bavarian Institute for Cattle Breeding. The Minister of Agriculture, Dr. Hundhammer, welcomes the Somali president and escorts him through the extensive grounds and modern research institute. richer for some useful information which the Somalian experts will doubtless be able to utilize for their agriculture and cattle breeding on the east coast of Africa, President Osman comes to the end of his tour of Germany. At Munich airport, the Speaker of the Bavarian Parliament, Ludwig Hanauer, and Bavaria's Minister of Agriculture, Dr. Hundhammer, bid farewell to the President of the Somali Republic. Then His Excellency boards a special plane of the German Lufthansa. As he leaves German soil, President Arden Abdulle Osman is accompanied by the cordial wishes of the German people and their government for his personal well-being and a happy future for his country.